High School Football. The Hits. The Scores. Complete coverage of the high school games that matter. This is Friday Night Blitz. Sponsored by Bojangles. Ah, uh, yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hoping your day is wonderful and blessed like butter. Let's go on a roll, baby, with the latest edition of Friday Night Blitz. Let's get the party started with our Friday Night Blitz game of the week. Friday Night Blitz Game of the Week, sponsored by Don Hudson Insurance. This week's Friday Night Blitz Game of the Week comes from the Dogwood District. Campbell County Rivals hooking up with the William Campbell Generals, hosting the Alta Vista Colonels. Now, last season, Alta Vista got a 34-yard TD pass from Jalen Jones to Mikel Stone with 20 seconds left in the game to beat the Generals 35-28. Will we have something similar? Let's find out. We're going to go out to Naruna. And we have the scoreless action in the first quarter. And look at what happens here. How about this in the red zone? Jalen Jones, Mikel Stone, we just mentioned him. That's a touchdown. Altavist up six zip. Two minutes left in the quarter in the red zone again. This is time is Markel Dawkins. He's going to run to the outside and get the score for the Colonels with the two-point conversion. Altavist up 14-0. So we go to the fourth quarter. William Campbell bowing back. This is Russell Thompson with the keeper with the two. It's 14-8. Generals with the ball back after they recovered the onside kick. This is Thompson hooking up with Randy Crabtree, who's all alone, goes to the house, young fella, with the two-point conversion. The Generals up 16 to 14. Six minutes left in the quarter. Freshman Jordan Pippen. Yeah, two stars used to be in the Bulls. Anyway, yeah, quarterback, he's going to take the ball himself, running down the sideline, and he's gone. That's a touchdown. The Colonels go back on top, 21 to 16. On the ensuing kickoff where Ryan Moy had some fun at this game. Yes, typically when we show a kickoff, I'm foreshadowing something nice here. William Campbell's Perry Elam with the ball, and guess what? He's not going to be stopped making cuts to the outside, to the end. Zigzagging, yes, straight line to the zone. That's going to be a touchdown. The Generals go back on top 22-21, but Alta Vista had the last laugh in this ball game. Jalen Jones with the quarterback keeper with the two point conversion. The Colonels salute the Generals. They get the win tonight, 29 to 22. Ryan Moy has more from this exciting game from Naruna. Well, for tonight's game of the week, we have Alta Vista taking on William Campbell. The Generals come into this contest one and one overall, while the Colonels still looking for their first win of the season. Now, this one came all the way down to the wire, considering it was all about each offense going toe to toe and seeing which one can come out on top. First of all, it's a pretty good ball team over there. Uh, William Campbell's got a good group of guys over there. Um, it's just, you know, we've talked about composure all week long, and just you know, we talked to them at halftime about holding their composure, you know, and, and that was that's, that's how it ended, so it was, it was big. And we had all the guys at practice, and it was able to put everything in we need to put in, and it was just an excellent outcome. The freshman came in there, our quarterback went out for a little bit, our senior quarterback, and she comes in and runs her inside zone, pulls it, runs down the sideline for a touchdown. That was huge. It feels good, I mean, because, you know, obviously when you're losing everything, it magnifies, you know, it feels good to get a win, you know, it just it hopefully it picks things up in practice and we can move forward with it. Well, in the end, both teams trading blows in the fourth quarter, but the Colonels, they come out on top. They beat the Generals 29 to 22, and they get their first win of the season. Local in Campbell County, Ryan Moy, WFXR Sports. Thank you so much, Ryan. Staying in the Dogwood District, defending Class 2 champs, the Appomattox County Raiders take on the Nelson County Governors. Raiders, they would come out swinging in a big way. Second play of the game, Trey Lawing calls his own number, and there's a good reason why. He's going to burst to the left, to the sideline. That's 51 yards, untouched, 7-0 Raiders. Appomattox County is going to do some special teams party, courtesy of Tess Booker with the block. And then the singer, Bronson Williams, he's going to dive into the end zone for that. 14-0 Raiders. Raiders taking advantage of the possession here. This is Jonathan Penix takes the handoff and he does the rest. Parting the governor's defense like the Red Sea. Moses would do that. 21 yards or 65 yards to pay dirt. 21-0 Raiders. And the Raiders going to win big tonight over the governors. 83-6. Meanwhile, we're up to the land of Allegheny. The Mountaineers hosting the Radford Bobcats, they're perfect on the season. Bobcats up 12-0, and Zane Roop, the Emory Henry signee, hooking up Marcel Baylor for the touchdown and made it 19-0. Allegheny QB Ethan Kimberlin moving around with the ball, but he does something that coaches probably don't like. That's cough up the football. And on the other end, Brendan Porterfield recovers for the Bobcats. This will lead to Radford's Tyrell Dobson moving around. 
and he's going to make a play and move it deep into Allegheny territory. Ending the drive, how about Darius Wesley Brubeck? That's DWB if you keep and score at home. He gets the touchdown, 26 0. Radford at this point, and Radford blanks Allegheny tonight, 40 to nothing. More Three Rivers District action. 3 0 Carroll County, the surprise of the year. The Cavaliers hosting the James River Knights. And the Knights, guess what they could do? They, they couldn't do any wrong here. Uh, but they had a little turnover action. They would fumble the ball, and uh, the Cavaliers' defense was strong. And then another, I tell you what, Zeal Hammonds, he got swarmed on that play. And then later on, how about this defense by Carroll County? They were just moving hard, moving the ball. But in the end, in this ball game, there's an interception right there by Xavier Flippin. The Cavs, they take this one, blanking James River tonight by the score of 40 to nothing. So Carroll County getting the shutout tonight by the score of 40 to nothing if we have the score there. And there we go. Meanwhile, let's go to the scoreboard. We see that Rockbridge County, they stay unbeaten with a 38-6 win over Waynesboro. Rule retreat, winning over Chill Howie, 33 to 11. And more scores, George Washington beating Halifax by the score of 54 to 6. Magna Vista over Patrick County, 35 to 7. And Narrows shutting out Eastern Montgomery by the score of 43 to nothing. Coming up on Friday Night Blitz, we will share how the William Fleming Colonels are dealing with a season of the unknown. This is Friday Night Blitz. Now, back to Friday Night Blitz, sponsored by Bojangles. And welcome back to Friday Night Blitz. We'll get back to the highlights in a few minutes. Now, the high school football season began just three weeks ago, and many of the schools in our area have seen plenty of schedule changes since play began. Some have even seen their programs suspended due to issues with COVID-19. And WFSR Sports' Ryan Moy report on, he spoke with one team who just hit the ground running while dealing with the adversity of the ups and downs of an unprecedented season. It's been a pretty wild week for the William Fleming High School football team. They began their 2021 campaign last Friday, then just four days after, the Colonels had to turn around and play a non-district matchup against Glenver. And to say the short turnaround for William Fleming has been a grind is an understatement. We played the toughest team in the area on Friday, and uh, I think everybody's got to lick their wounds a little bit after playing body tight. So fast turnaround for our guys. Uh, proud of the way they responded to adversity, uh, took care of their bodies, These uh, this short little 72-hour turnaround that we've had. The Colonels fell to Lord Botetot last week 49-6. to William Fleming then went on to beat the Highlanders 32-22 to at Highlander Field. And it was also the first ever matchup between both squads as well. It was a hard fought contest where the Colonels claimed their first victory of the season. And a tough Glenver team. I, I think people don't know how tough these guys are and they, they really fight hard. So um, only the second game for us and a short turnaround. So very proud of the way we responded tonight. As the Colonels emerged victorious, the game wasn't your ordinary contest. For William Fleming, it was about honoring one of their own. We had one of our starting uh, senior linemen, Stephen Hickman, go down and practice last week. Um, and that was a lot of adversity right before Botetide. And um, we told him we were going to bring this jersey and, and represent for him. So uh, I know he's watching right now, and we want to tell him that we love him. Stephen Hickman, number 58. As the Colonels set their sights on Liberty Christian Academy this weekend, the thoughts of their injured teammate will continue to carry them through the season. Local in Salem, Ryan Moy, WFXR Sports. Thank you so much, Ryan. Now for a tour of the Blue Ridge. Lord Botok Cavaliers hosting their rivals in the William Bird Terrier. Start of the game, Hunter Rice is the man, 100 grand. Case in point, look at Hunter Rice running, breaking through the Terrier D. He's gone, 60 yards. The Cavaliers up seven zip early. It was so nice, he had to do it twice, as in Hunter Rice. Twice, Rice, it all rhymes. He got a second touchdown there. Cavaliers right now, they're going to go on top 14 to nothing. Now for some action in the second quarter. Cavaliers are up 21 to zero. And Hunter Rice the third time's the charm at this point. And he does it again to the outside. That offensive line of Bonitot is going to be tough to reckon with. 27 nothing at the missed PAT. And LB goes to 3-0 on a year. 55-13 winners over William Byrd. Down in Dillon Stadium, Rocky Mount, a bird battle. The Franklin County Eagles hosting the Stanton River. Golden Eagles, Franklin County starting off strong in the first quarter. Eli Fouts goes to the air, hooks up with Josh Luckett. He's going to make it in for the zone. 40-yard TD pass, 7-0 Franklin County. But the Stanton River Eagles, they're not far behind. Aiden Brown, he's going to pitch it over to Jason Eanes. He's going to do a lot of moving, a lot of swerving, a lot of negotiations, and spins his way in. He's going to get it all the way to the house, young fella. 
Both teams there are tied now at seven. In the first quarter, we're not done. Franklin County's turn to get the end zone party going. J. Ron Smith is going to take it through for the score. Franklin County leading 14 to seven at this point. The Eagles, they stay unbeaten. 45-21 winners, winners over Stanton River. Up next on Friday Night Blitz, we have action from the River Ridge and Seminole districts as Pulaski County and Heritage, both looking to stay perfect. Stick and stay, please. Now, back to Friday Night Blitz, sponsored by Bojangles. And welcome back to Friday Night Blitz off to the River Ridge District where the Selma Spartans have the bye in the district this week. So we check in on the other undefeated team in the district, the Pulaski County Cougars, under the guidance of new coach Mark Dixon. At 3-0, the Cougars are hosting tight an 0-3 Blacksburg Bruins team hit hard by injury. So to Dobson Stadium in Pulaski. This game was close throughout much of the half. Pulaski County up 7-0, but they would add to the lead. How about this? Drew Dalton to Chase Dotson with a touchdown. 14-0 Cougars. Soon after that, Cougars will get the running game going. Keontae Kennedy. Key can, if you will. That's a touchdown. 21-0 Cougars. Just for the half, after an interception from the Cougar D, there he goes this time. Ethan Gallimore. Running for more, as in more touchdowns and scores. 28-0 Pulaski. The Cougars, they go to 4-0 on the year with a 56-0 win over Blacksburg. Let's go over to Patriot Stadium in Roanoke. Patrick Henry coming off their first loss of the season, taking on the K-Spring Knights, coming off their first win of the season. Patrick Henry's Roy Gunn's going to go deep and hook up with Jazzy Kipro. Got it in stride. That's a touchdown. With the extra point, it's now 13-0. That was missed, by the way. Then K Spring would get back Skyler Griffiths. He's going to go to the air all alone. Look at Daniel Reeves just waiting for the ball. He got it right there, and he made it into the end zone. Touchdown. 13-7, PH still on top. Gun going up again through the air. He's going to hook up with guess who? You remember earlier, how about Kimbrough? Kimbrough got it over the shoulder. They hooked up on that touchdown. The extra point was missed. And PH, they were going and win this one over the K Spring Knights, 32 to 18. Now, if you like to see the K Spring Patrick Green game in its entirety, we have it for you right here on the High School Student Football Playback. That'll be Saturday afternoon, 4:30 on our sister station, WWCW. Dave Ross, Steve Myers, he, they'll have the call, of the broadcast produced locally by Franklin County High School students. We wrap up the River Ridge District tour over at Bogle Stadium, Hidden Valley, hosting Christiansburg. This one was 20-0 at the half, and then the Blue Demons, Casey Graham, is going to hand off to Parker. Shim! He gets it in for the touchdown. That made it 26 to nothing, and that was the final score of the game as the uh, Christiansburg Blue Demons, they go on and they shut out Hidden Valley tonight. 26 to nothing. Seminole District action for you. The Heritage Pioneers looking to stay perfect. Travel over to Rustburg to play the Red Devils. First quarter action. Heritage is Cameron Burns. You know, when we show him, he's going to do some nice things, like a nice touchdown there, 7-0 Heritage. But Rustberg had an answer. Anything you can do, I can do better. One good turn deserves another. Avery Dixon is going to find his way through the Pioneer D and gets to the outside, and he scores with the two-point conversion. The Rustberg Red Devils up 8-7. To, to the second quarter, Rajan Booker Felder. Three names, but one touchdown. Got it in there, 14-8 Pioneers. And then Burns... He shows he can run, but he got an air game, as in Keyshawn Hubbard in stride, got it, making the move, and he's going to take it. Zigzagging his way to the zone. That's a touchdown. And Heritage, they went over Rustburg tonight big time, 69-16. to 16. Staying in Campbell County, the Brookville Bees hosting the Amherst County Lancers. Brookville, yes, they have the flag, and it's all nice. Drake McDaniel, though, he's going to go to the air. A lot of air attack play tonight. Ethan Roby, or Robbie, depending on how you want to say it, gets the first down. And then a little bit later, Brookville will go to the ground. Silas Rucker from seven yards out with the two-point conversion, 8-0 Brookville. Amherst, though, they would get things going. C.J. Rose blooming his way with a pass to Lawrence Brown, Jr. What can Brown do for you? How about breaking a few tackles and going down the sideline, young fellow? Three ball, got it. 60-yard score, 8-7 Brookville. But then Brookville would go again. Tayshawn Butler. Remember him from week one, he had that 108 yard pick six, but he could run the ball as well. And he plows his way in for the score, 14-7 Brookville. Brookville, more running game here in the second. How about Lance Blankenship? Yes, this is your ship, this is your crew, you got it, 27 Brookville. Brookville, 3-0 on a year. They go to that with a 47-29 win over Amherst County. 
And our final highlight of the night, Liberty Minutemen stepping out of district to play Broadway, the Gobblers. Things got underway nearly 90 minutes late because the officials didn't get there. Broadway would make it their way. Landon Stubmiller, he's going to go to Nate Tennell for the 16-yard score, 7-0 Gobblers. Minutemen getting the work midway through the second by Tanner Stanley. He's going to take care of business. The five-yard quarterback keeper ties it at seven. Liberty, they kept rolling in this one. 70 seconds going to have Stanley going to go and find the senior Marquise Ingram uh, got it in there for the touchdown. Minutemen led 14 to 7 at the break, but Broadway would come back with three touchdowns in the second half. They win this one 28 to 14. So we have six area games coming at you tomorrow beginning at noon. George with taking on Galax. Then they renew their rivalry Then one o'clock. Another good rivalry game Floyd County at Glenver and then Perry McClure and Covington. Nice rivalry games. 2 o'clock, we have Fort Chiswell taking on Bland County. That's at Bland County. 4 o'clock, Auburn taking on Grayson County at Galax High School. So Galax will be a busy field to play on. And at 7 o'clock, William Fleming will travel over to Williams Stadium in Lynchburg to play the LCA Bulldogs. Coming up next on Friday Night Blitz, we have our latest Player of the Week award. More Friday Night Blitz coming up on the other side. It's time for the Friday Night Blitz Player of the Week, sponsored by Tater Benson of MKB Realtors. The Brookville Bees may have the play of the year from their junior defensive back in Tayshawn Butler. In the season opener against Liberty Christian, the Bulldogs were driving for a score, but the Butler did it. Tayshawn Butler's intercepted the ball eight yards deep in the end zone, and he goes the other way for a 108-yard pick six. It is the longest play in Virginia High School League history. And this week's Player of the Week in Brookville's Tayshawn Butler gives us some insight on this historic play. They started pushing it, started getting the red zone. We got a timeout. Um, um, Coach Washburn, our defensive coordinator, I remember him telling us, you got to bow your neck no matter what. Do not let him get in. Don't let him get in. Man, they were so close. They almost got it, man. Made a play. I just got amazing blocks on the field. Helped me get to the end zone. And in the end zone, Tayshawn, the ball was tipped. It was like, I think it was, it looking at the video we had, it was in the receiver's hands. Yeah, he got it. And that then, ball. Yeah, he got knocked out. Yep. And that when you were in the end zone, there wasn't, a, I mean, it wasn't like the easiest thing to do because you had to negotiate to get out of the end zone and then even take it down the field. Yes, sir. Um, I'll probably say the biggest thing with that, uh, I can't remember which teammate's name, but I was tempted to knee it. But my teammate, he had like got me a good block, and I was like, all right, maybe I can take this one. Seeing everybody running in front of me. When you heard this was a state record, what was going through your mind? Oh man, it was it was amazing. You know, it's like it's like it's something you don't think about during the game. You just like, yes, we scored. But like after you look back, you appreciate it. Now, what Coach Meeks told me is, I mean, you're more known for your offense, but defense, you're really rocking and rolling with it recently. Yeah. Um, yeah, defense hasn't never really been my thing, but this year it needed me to step up and do it. Coach Penn, he's been doing an amazing job preparing me, him and Coach Davis, you know, coaching me up, my teammates. They all been helping me through it, and it's going pretty well. What are some of the things you like doing away from the game of football? Um... I probably say my favorite thing to do is probably play basketball. It's a Tayshawn on the Player of the Week honor. Now, guess what, folks? For all the latest news, sports, and weather, you can head over to WFSRTV.com. And a little bit later, we'll have the entire show and all the games on our website. And that does it for this edition of Friday Night Blitz. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hope all of your teams are winners. Have a wonderful and blessed night, everybody, and enjoy your wonderful weekend.